What is going on guys, Will Max Random Videos back in another video, and in this video I'm going to be telling you about the SteelSeries Rival 3 Wireless. So starting off with the specs of this mouse, we have an ambidextrous, ambidextrous gaming mouse, weighing in at 106 grams, 95 grams if you only put one of the batteries in, constructed of ABS plastic, housed inside that ABS plastic we have a set of SteelSeries mechanical switches. Rated at 60 million clicks. Housed in that same shell, we have a true move error sensor capable of reaching 1800 or 18,000 DPI. And so, pretty standard stuff for most mice. It's on the heavier side of the like quote unquote gaming mice market. Yeah. All right. So now onto the actual physical features of this mouse. So as I said, this mouse before it is a ambidextrous gaming mouse. And the reason I'm saying this is because the side buttons are on the right side of the mouse also for left-handed people. They are only on the left side of the mouse for right-handed people. And I guess the only mouse I've really seen that would be considered as a true ambidextrous gaming mouse would have to be the Razer Viper Ultimate, being that it has the two side buttons on the mouse. Other than that, it's can be considered an ambidextrous gaming mouse, but I personally would have to say that it is an ambidextrous gaming mouse, if you get what I'm saying. Now on the top of this mouse, we have the one zone of RGB that turns off whenever you move the mouse and the default setting of the SteelSeries software. You can enable it to always be on, but those will use the battery of the mouse a lot more than while you're actually gaming, having it just off in general while you're moving the mouse, which saves the battery. And this mouse's battery does not last super long. But flipping it over to the bottom of the mouse, we have a switch to switch from Bluetooth to off then 2.4 gigahertz. And it's a very defined switch. And you may also notice that the sensor is not in the middle of the mouse, which this is one gripe that I have with this mouse, is that it's further towards the back. So doing the slight adjustments with your wrist, it's a bit more awkward if you're used to a mouse where the sensor is in the direct center of the mouse, like under your hand, as this one's further back. The feet of the mouse, they slide quite well. You have three of them, one at the back that's more curved, and then two up front. Now looking at this mouse from the top, we do have a shell that sort of flares out at the end, and this is nice for gripping the mouse, especially if fingertip grip is your way of gripping mice. And I suppose this mouse would work with claw grip. There's not a very pronounced bump, I guess you could say compared to like other mice like the G Pro X Superlight, which I haven't got to test, which would be cool if I got to test that mouse, but it's expensive. Now to get to the batteries of this mouse along with the dongle that is included, which is a USB type A dongle, you have to remove the back cover. So basically what you take and do is you slide the back cover back and then you'll be able to take it off. And this does actually stay on quite well while you're gaming. It will not slide on you. Now the actual side buttons of this mouse fl do flare out quite nicely to your hand, like they're easy to press and you shouldn't be, you should if unless you have a gigantic thumb, you shouldn't have a problem of pressing the buttons on accident. And yeah, now on to my personal thoughts about this mouse and my personal experiences. So one problem that I have noticed over time with this mouse is the left click has depreciated a good amount lower than the right click. Personally, I play a lot of Valorant though, so you're mainly using your left click more than your right click in a lot of situations, and so it is depreciated a good amount. And as I was talking about earlier with the sensor being located further back, it's easy to get used to. You just have to take some like time to play a little bit of aim lab or something, and then you have no problem whatsoever. It's quite easy to get used to, and if that's the one reason you were thinking that this mouse wouldn't be a good mouse for you. It's it's not that big of a problem. It's perfectly fine. Now, one problem that I do have is that this mouse's battery life is not ideal. Like, on their site, it says it lasts forever, but I have had problems with the battery just draining. Like, lately, it hasn't been too bad, but whenever I first got the mouse and, like, just sort of this entire setup behind me, it it drained away really quickly. And I think that was because I had the always on RGB or illumination. But if you have it on the setting where it just has the illumination on whenever you're not like using the mouse, 
Shouldn't be too much of a problem for you. And then one thing that I really hate with this mouse is that it goes into a sleep mode, right? Which you can adjust when it goes into a sleep mode. But it goes into a sleep mode and then you have to click to wake it up. You can't just slide the mouse around to wake it up because it will not wake up. You have to actually physically click or hit the scroll wheel or something. And oh my gosh, that is annoying. If you made it to the end of the video, I thank you. Be sure to leave a comment if you enjoyed or maybe your opinion on this mouse, if you own this mouse or something that you saw in B-roll or whatever, whenever I was moving the mouse around. But yeah, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you in the next one, and good bye!